What's up, sports design family? Mike with Sports Templates back at it again. And today I'm gonna to show you how to turn this Photoshop hockey arena template into this Wolves design. Uh, before we get started, please look down below, hit those like and subscribe buttons. And there's a link down there in the comments or in the description where you can grab the asset library that we're gonna use for this tutorial and uh, then you can follow along. So you'll be able to get a link to this library here with colors and logos that we're gonna be using today. You can follow along if you'd like to, um, or you can just do your own design. So today we're gonna focus on this isometric view of the hockey arena, uh, but I also wanna show you that you get another view when you purchase this template. You also get the side view. Okay, so um, either one that you want to use that works best for the design, or maybe you want to do both, right? So you can kind of get a couple different perspectives, both included with this template package uh, over at sportstemplates.net. So uh, these things are totally loaded with smart objects and customizable options, all of it in 6K resolution. Um, so if you zoom in, you can just kind of see all the amazing details that are in here. Um, you've got the floor, the railing, the seats, some uh, folded up and some are folded down. We've got a screen here that goes around the arena where you can put different graphics to show you that. Um, even up here on the second level, there's some smart objects so you can put like a design on top of the seats like we see here uh, with the wolves and you can see the screen there. So lots and lots of cool stuff. Uh, there's even a foreground uh, folder where you can actually customize this sort of blurred out section of foreground. It kind of gives you a unique perspective or you can totally just turn it off um, if you don't want to have it. And um, you just fill in the background color with something if you want to do that. So the foreground is there and uh, you can also do custom designs on the ice and on all the walls that go around the rink. Um, so it's all totally customizable for you. Just wanted to zoom in so you could see the details. I mean, if you if you really zoom in, and I'm doing this by holding controller command and hitting the plus key, you can see like even the ice has, you know, the skate marks on it. Um, so it looks like it's actually been used. So really, really cool. You can see the glass going around so amazing detail on this thing. Um, you can change everything to the color of the floor. You can even change. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we are working, like I said, on this wolves design. I'm just going to shrink this down so we can kind of look at it as we're going. We're not going to match it exactly detail for detail, but uh, we'll get close. We're just going to kind of work through. So uh, let's start on the bottom. We'll get into this arena folder. And if we go down to the bottom, we can see the floor color, right? So that's that's the color of the floor. Um, and we're just gonna set it a little bit darker to this, what I call alt black. It's not quite all the way black. Actually, no, I think I have it gray um, in, the, in the reference. So we'll make it this gray color. Um, the seat color, we'll set to that black. Okay, it's not totally black because sometimes that just gets a little too dark and you lose some detail. Um, that's what completely black would look like. And it still works, um, but I like to just a little bit lighter so you can see a little bit more detail. And then we've got our seat design smart objects. So these for, for the seat designs up here on the second layer. So let's go to the right. And um, we're just gonna take this wolves text, drop it in here. I'm just gonna kind of center it just about like that. I'm gonna turn off my grid and my background. Controller Command S to save and just gonna preview the placement. And that looks pretty good. Um, I'm just gonna bring the opacity down. We'll say maybe 50% so it kind of looks a little more uh, like it's painted on or something. Okay, that looks great. And when you do that one, um, the smart objects are duplicated, so it automatically places it over here too, with a different perspective on it. Okay, so our seats designs are done. Uh, let's change our railing color. That's the railing that goes all around the arena. We're gonna change that to yellow. And you'll notice it didn't change here because that is in our foreground and rail um, folder here. So um, let's go in and change that. It's a smart object. 
we go in there and we've got kind of all the same options that we have out in the main area. So we'll change the floor to this gray color. We'll change the rail to the yellow. We'll change the seats to the black. There's some more floor sections. So we'll just change all those to the gray. And that's it. We'll close that. And it's saving as we close, right? Rather than hit Control or Command S to save, I, I didn't need to preview it, so I just closed it. And now you can see that's all updated to match, okay? So we're done with that area. Uh, let's get into the rink. Okay, so we've got the glass. We can, I don't know why you'd want to turn it off, but you can if you want to. Um, we've got, let's go bottom up. We've got the ice surface, okay? So if we get into the ice color, it's already preset to a nice, color for ice. Um, I don't think we added that to the library, so um, it, it'll be set that in the template when you pick it up. But if you want to copy the color code there, um, the hex code is B2D1ED. And then if we go into the ice design smart object, you can see we can put whatever design we want to on the ice. Um, we've got these folders here for the different parts of the grid, right? If you wanted to change those, you can. You can you can change the colors of all of those if you want to. Um, but we just want to get our logo in at the center, right? So we're just going to drag that in. I'm going to hold the shift key and get my cursor to where it is kind of that bendy arrow and that's the rotate option. And if you hold the shift key and click and drag as you're rotating, it'll rotate an exact 15 degree intervals. So I can go directly to 90 pretty quickly and easily. I'm just going to place this as close to right in the center as I can get it. Uh, vertical and horizontal. Right, so right there. And then um, I'm going to hit Control or Command S and just kind of see how it looks, right? Close that up. And there we have it. And if you wanted to, you could even bring the opacity down on this. Let's just say 70, oops, 70%. Hit Control or Command S to save that. And then you can kind of see, you know, and you got the lines running through there. So you could mask those out if you wanted to. I like it with the full opacity. I think it looks, it looks pretty good. Pretty bold on the ice. Okay, so that looks great. Um, what else do we need to do? Our reference image, we got to do the screen. And we've still got to do the um, boards and everything around. Leave that on. So ice is done. Goals, if you want to, um, you can change the color of the goals. That's not something that you would commonly do. Like I think it's always going to be red for an official game. Um, but don't hold me to that. But if you wanted to, you could actually go in and change the color of the goals as well. Um, there's a hue saturation layer here. You just click on the properties and kind of drag this around to change the color of the goal. Right? So if you wanted to make it yellow or any other color like that, I'm going to keep it red. Um, I just wanted to show you that you can do that. Let's get into the wall. So within the wall, we've got a lot of different things. We have the outer wall color and the outer design. So I'm going to set the outer wall color to the black and you kind of see it creep through there. Um, if you turn off the design, you'll see that the color of the wall is affected there. I'm gonna turn the design back on. Okay, so for the outer design, we're gonna go into this outer design folder. We're gonna start with this front portion here, open up that smart object, and we're gonna drop in our trees. So we'll just drop those in here. I'm going to zoom in, control or command and the plus key. And I'm just going to drag these right about there. And then I'm going to start spreading them out across the entire length. So I'm going to hold the alt and the shift key and just drag them over. Kind of get it butted up right against the other one. Um, so when you hold the alt key, your cursor turns into that little kind of two arrows and that means you're duplicating and holding the shift key um, it doesn't really allow it to move up or down very easily as you're dragging it, so you can keep it lined up horizontally. Um, it really, whichever way you're dragging, it's going to help you just keep it pretty precise. So if I hold the shift key and I start dragging up, it's going to 
It's not going to move left or right unless I'm really, really forcing it to. Actually, it won't do it at all right now. Um, but let's, let's do that again. We'll just keep going until we fill the whole thing all the way across. It's okay if you go off the edge. We're going to work on aligning everything once we get to the other portions of the wall. Just drag that over. Drag that over. It doesn't have to be perfectly aligned, right? We're just getting as close as we can. And this should be the last one. Okay, I'm gonna turn off our grid and our background color. Controller Command S to save. And now we have those lighter, you know, kind of gray trees going around the wall. So I'm just gonna repeat that on the rest of the sections of the wall. I'll speed up the video so you don't have to watch me do all that. Okay, so we've got the outer wall design placed, got the light gray trees all around the black, blackish wall. Um, you can see the same design is repeated on the inside and that's because uh, in case you wanted to have the same you know, design or sponsors on the inside or the outside of the wall, all those smart objects are duplicates. Um, but let's say like we have in our image, you don't want the same design on the inside and the outside of the wall. Um, what you can do, right, if, if you change these smart objects, and it's going to change both the inside and the outside. So a great way when you have sort of duplicated smart objects like that um, and you don't want to, you know, you can't really change one thing without changing the other. Uh, what you can do is I'm going to click on the outer design layer. I'm going to hit controller command J and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to turn off the one underneath. I'm going to leave those smart objects alone. But these smart objects, I'm going to select them all and I'm going to right click and I'm going to rasterize them. So now these are raster layers. They're no longer smart objects. So when I go and I change the smart objects uh, for the other wall designs, it's not going to change these anymore. Okay, these are totally independent now. Um, and you could even, you know, if you want to play with alignment or warp them or do other things, color overlays, whatever, you can do all that. So that's a, that's a trick for when you have linked smart objects. So we're gonna go ahead and do the inner wall design now. Um, we'll set the inner wall color to kind of a nice white color. I don't think I have it in the library, but we'll just do um, something that's not pure white. And then we'll start doing the inner design, which is set up in the same way as the other, right? Um, it's broken into sections. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all these trees and I'm going to start dropping in my sponsor logos. So we'll do that one there. We'll drop this one next to it. I'm going to zoom in, controller command and the plus key and I'm just going to line that up. And then I'll drop this other one in and that looks pretty good. Let's move it over a little. And then I'm going to do like I did before and just um, duplicate these across the entire length of the canvas. So I'm going to, again, fast forward the video so you don't have to watch all that. Okay, so now the inner wall design is done. You can see the sponsor logos are displayed all around the inside of the wall. A couple other things we need to change with the wall. I'm going to turn on this baseboard color layer. Um, just going to leave it at that yellow. It kind of matches our team colors and I think that's just normally the color that goes along the baseboard. Uh, the top edge color, we'll go ahead and set that to match our reference image, which looks to be also yellow. So we'll go to the yellow in our library and set it there. And that changes the color of the top edge of the wall. When you're zoomed in, these things move a little bit more slowly. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more. Um, we've got our team boxes and penalty box areas and press boxes or whatever we want to call them. So um, let's get into those. There's a benches and boxes folder here. We're going to change the top edge again to yellow. We'll make the box color this dark color. And let's put a design here on the outside of the box. Uh, we'll drop in our skate with the pack. This is a free font from Adobe fonts. And let's see if I can see what it's called. Should be in my recent fonts. 
It's Battery Park, if you want to get that font. Save that. And now we have our design there. So the only thing left to do is our screen. So if we go up into our screen folder, we've got our design, which has a glow, and I'll show you what that looks like after we are finished with the uh, design itself. So let's start in the center of the screen. And uh, we just had in our reference design, we just had some scores going around. Um, and so for that, we'll just do a text layer and we'll just choose sort of a basic font, set it to kind of a bright white color. I'm going to set my background to black just so I can see what's going on here. And let me make this a little bit bigger, maybe there. And we'll just make up some scores, right? We had like Las Vegas. Three. Seattle. Two. Put a bunch of spaces between. Actually, and I think I was doing it a little bit differently, right? I was doing something like this. However you want to do it, right? It's This is just for example. Um, let's actually select all and center this text so we can kind of see where I, I'm putting some spaces between so I can fit my logo in there. Let's do Detroit one, New York zero, and we'll do one more. We'll do Phoenix four and Tampa Bay two. And I'm going to shrink all this down just a little bit. And then I'm just going to move my text down so it's pretty much horizontally centered. And I'm going to drop some logos in here in between. Make this just a little bit smaller. Zoom in, control, or command plus, so I can be a little more precise with the size. Okay. And I'm gonna hold my Alt and my Shift key, create a copy, which I lost. And I'm just gonna keep moving this over. Get it pretty nicely placed in between there. All right, I'm gonna turn off the background color, hit Control or Command S and see, oh, you know, I'm sorry, I need to turn the background color on um, and we'll make it, I don't want it to be quite so dark, we'll make it this color. So there we have some scores going around. I don't think it's the same font I used before, but um, it still works, right, if you wanted to do that. But I think I left something out that I'd like to add in. Um, we have these stripes, right? Let's make these our yellow color and I'm gonna just shrink that text down just a little bit more. It's a little bigger than I wanted. All right, and I'll just move it over a little bit. And then I'll take my logos and kind of reposition those. So sometimes you're just, you know, sort of playing with things, filling it out. I'm gonna hold the Alt key while I'm shrinking this so it does it from the center. I'm gonna reposition it just a little bit. I think I'm gonna bring it down a little just so it's not so close to that yellow line. Let me go ahead and delete the other one and we'll just make a new one over here. Put that about there. And we need one more now. And we can add some more to our text. Let's do Anaheim.
Okay, so we've got our design placed here and we're gonna repeat it on the other sections and, and line everything up. So again, I'm gonna not make you watch all that and I'll speed up the video, but I wanna show you what happens when we turn on the glow. The glow is just a uh, folder that has duplicates of the smart objects with some effects added to them to give you a simulated glow effect like you would see on a scoreboard, right? The lights are the lights are glowing. So I'm going to turn that on just so you can see what that looks like. And I'm going to speed up the video while I finish up the other sections of the wall. Okay, so I finished putting the scores around with the logos around on the screen. And that completes our design. So um, pretty easy template to use. Lots of different things you can customize go to whatever level of detail that you want to. Customize the walls, customize the gold colors, the design on the ice, um, the seats, the scoreboard, you know, everything that you want to do. Um, super, super easy to use. Uh, zoom in and just give you a look at some more of the details before we end. All right, so you can see lots of details, textures, reflections, and you can see the detail on the scoreboard even. It's just really, really textured like like the real thing right and you can see what it looks like without the glow so i really hope you enjoyed today's tutorial be sure to head over to sportstemplates.net and pick up this template and uh, tag us when you post on social media and all of your designs we want to see them until next time thanks for watching and have fun